Throw It Back with another Throwback Thursday. Joining us is Lori Kent with the Local Oo Podcast. What are we talking about today? Well, good morning. We're going to talk morning. about a school, actually. Okay. So um, this school is Emerson School, and it's really interesting. Something happened when I was researching this where I was just like, Did I, why didn't I ever connect those dots? Mm. So Whittier, Longfellow, Hawthorne, Emerson, Mark Twain, these are all literary giants, but they're also all schools in Sioux Falls at one time or another. Mm. So I thought that was really interesting. I never knew there was any kind of theme for naming schools. I still don't know who started the theme, but I like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, Emerson Park um, is what remains of Emerson School, and there's a historical marker there. So I went and visited, um, and it tells us about in 1923, Sioux Falls is growing, and they need a new school on the west side, and all of this probably sounds like something that we'd hear today. Sioux Falls is growing, so many kids, we need more schools. So. They picked this spot off of 14th between West and Lake Avenue, and they build this school. And it's a hundred, well, that's another interesting part, actually. <laughs> so on the marker, it says it cost $100,000, but in the Argus Leader, it said $140,000. So I don't know. <laughs> I feel like schools probably aren't ever under budget, so I'm going to lean more towards the $140,000. <laughs> so that's way over $2 million in today's money, which is a lot. This mm -hmm. school is huge. Uh, it's a couple stories tall. It's big enough to house all of these kids for a while. <laughs> uh -huh. um, and so it's a great school. But, you know, all good things must come to an end. So after 75 years of service to the children of Sioux Falls in 1998, the school closes. And then it's kind of like, what are we going to do with this? Because now this big, huge school is kind of a big, huge problem. Um, and so you might be thinking, like, why did this school close at all? Well... <laughs> It was just too big, too old. It would have cost too much money to update mm -hmm. and maintain, and they thought it would be cheaper, easier to build something new than to maintain the old. Mm -hmm. So the problem then is, what do we do with this building? So for a while, they're talking about selling it, um, and that would obviously be a benefit to the school district. Um, then they also talk about repurposing it. They're like, why can't this be a child care center? And this is going to be happening all over Sioux Falls at the time because they're closing multiple schools. And you might be thinking, like, we're, aren't we, we're growing. Like, why are we closing? And again, mm -hmm. it's just, it's that school capital improvement program where they're like, we need to shut down what isn't working, build bigger, newer for this growing mm -hmm. Sioux Falls. And so Emerson isn't the only one that's on the chopping block. There's another school that has a very similar fate, and that is Lincoln Elementary School. So Emerson and Lincoln, they kind of follow the same path of, well, maybe we, they could be a child care center, maybe it could be a park, maybe it could be, but they end up getting demolished. So <laughs> then it's just the land that's left, and that's kind of where the story ends for Lincoln. That is just kind of it for it. So Emerson has a way better fate. It becomes a park. It actually gets to be something afterwards. So the, I think uh, the Parks and Rec TV show, that taught me <laughs> that, it taught me that you can't just, like it's not as simple as it seems. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I want that to be a park. And then overnight it becomes a park. Mm -hmm. So the Sioux Falls Parks and Rec, they spend years talking with people in the neighborhood, in the city, and they're trying to figure out like the best way to utilize this, I think it's like 3.6 acres. It's a really big park, smack dab in the middle of what is now a really well-established neighborhood in what is now considered Central Sioux Falls. Oh. It's not West Sioux Falls anymore. It's kind of smack dab in the middle. Mm -hmm. And so they make sure that this is something that the community is going to use and love and utilize. And the park opens in 2002 after, like I said, years of trying to make sure that this is going to be what the community wants and needs and is going to use. The only vestige of any kind of like architecture from yesteryear is a retaining wall that was built during the Great Depression by the WPA. 
that's it. <laughs> so interesting. Yeah. They have that just right, like you said, in the smack dab of Sioux Falls now. Definitely. And this is a park that I wasn't super aware of. Mm -hmm. um, this had been suggested to me by a couple different people. And so I went by and looked at it and I'm just like, I didn't know this was here. <laughs> you, can, you can drive right by it. Totally. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm so glad that they have the historical marker because I wouldn't have understood that it was ever a school or that it was named after Ralph Waldo Emerson. Yeah. Just and such a like big school and like huge. for the time probably so I agree. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, people want to learn more. How can they do so? For sure. Well, there's a new episode of Local Lou podcast out, which covers a little bit more about the school, and you can catch that on social media. I have Instagram, Facebook, um, and then Spotify, Apple, however you listen to podcasts. Yeah, for sure. Well, thanks for being here. Thanks. We'll be back after the break.